Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at dimmers again. I'm going to see how these things actually work and what they actually do when you uh, turn the knob and the brightness is reduced. Now this is the uh, setup we've got. So we've got a dimmer here. This is just some normal cheap thing. It goes from 60 to 250 watts. And so this is just a normal low priced one, normally designed for incandescent lamps. And uh, I've got a lamp over here. This is a uh, filament type, 60 watts, so that's obviously within the range of the dimmer. And obviously we can adjust the uh, brightness here. And then this switch here is basically to bypass the dimmer, so then we can have the lamp on permanently without using the dimmer at all. And we're going to see what the actual AC waveform looks like. And we're going to see it on the screen of this oscilloscope over here. Now I'll just point out here that uh, before anyone thinks of trying this themselves, this is not directly on the mains, it's from an isolating transformer. And this cable that goes into the oscilloscope isn't normal either, because it has this brown section in it. So uh, it's not just a question of shoving it and connecting it to the mains, because uh, if you do that, bad things will happen, including smoke and flames, oscilloscopes being destroyed and people being injured and killed. So this has uh, been set up uh, specifically for this. It is not just a question of uh, shoving wires together and seeing what happens. Now I'll just demonstrate what this is doing before we uh, turn this on and have a look at the screen. So uh, in this position here with the switch on, basically the dimmer doesn't do anything, it's just on that full brightness, 60 watts over there. But if we turn this off, then we can now adjust the brightness of the lamp there using the dimmer. So down to almost nothing, and obviously up to almost full brightness, because again that's uh, kind of full brightness according to the dimmer, it's turned around as far as possible, but if I bypass the dimmer, See, so there is a slight increase in brightness there, and if I turn it off, it goes down again as well. So uh, that's the sort of deal we've got. So we'll start out with it on uh, at uh, full power there, and then just have another look at the screen here, so see what's uh, going on in a bit more detail. Now what we've got here is a sine wave, and this is the AC waveform. So this middle line here represents zero, so it's starting at zero. Voltage increases quite smoothly up to the top, and then it reduces back down to zero. And then we have a negative voltage which comes down to the bottom here and comes up to the zero again. And this is what you get from the normal main supply. This is at 50 hertz, or it's basically 50 of these every second as we're in the UK. And of course if we expand that and have a look in there, it goes on pretty much forever. So it's a continuously repeating cycle, say 50 of those every second. Now so that's with the uh, power just on directly, so we're not using the dimmer at all here. Now, in terms of dimming, there are a couple of ways it could be done, one of which simply would be to reduce the voltage, and if the voltage was reduced, all that would happen is that the peak here would obviously get lower, and this would get lower down to the middle. Now, that could be achieved simply by putting a resistor in series with a lamp. The problem with that is that the resistor would get extremely hot, and it would waste a huge amount of power. Basically, anything that wasn't going to the lamp would just be thrown away as heat in the resistor. So, of course, dimmers don't work like that, because uh, if they did, say, there would basically be uh, electric heaters in the wall. Now I'm going to turn the dimmer to maximum here, and then we're going to switch in the dimmer and look what happens to the waveform. So it goes from that fairly smooth looking thing there, and this is with the dimmer in, and this is with the dimmer in at maximum power. So we can see now that uh, rather than starting up smoothly, there's actually a step here, which is basically zero. And we've got quite a sharp rise here. I've still got the top of the curve bit there, and it comes down to zero. And we've got the same thing basically in reverse here. So there's a bit where there's basically no voltage comes very steeply down onto the negative there, and then goes back and repeats there. And as before, of course, that repeats pretty much uh, all the way along as far as we care to look. Now, even though the dimmer is at maximum, the brightness is slightly reduced. And of course, this is because we've got these two bits here where there's effectively no voltage. So therefore, the uh, actual average voltage now is slightly less. So if we go back to the uh, normal one there, that's sort of full on. And there's the one with the dimmer on full. So even on full, it's not actually full at all. Now let's see what happens if we adjust the dimming knob and have a look on this side here as we turn down the brightness. So it's full brightness, and we're turning down the brightness. And you see what it's actually doing is introducing a delay. So it's basically at zero volts for a certain amount of time, and then suddenly it's switching on partway through the waveform, and then it's sort of going back to zero as before. And again, the same in the negative here. So it's remaining off for a longer period, suddenly turning on, and then it's coming back with the what's left of the waveform. And again, that repeats uh, pretty much forever, if we care to look along the side there. Now, this is called a leading edge dimmer. 
These are by far the most common type and they're the sort of original old type which were used with incandescent lamps. It's called leading edge because essentially it's cutting a piece out from the leading edge or the start of the waveform here. So you can imagine that would have originally gone in that sort of smooth pattern from there up to the top. It's putting in a delay so it's remaining off for a time and then suddenly it's switching on and the same in the negative. So that piece essentially is missing. That's how it is on the normal and then say the dimmer's just cutting it out. And if we uh, turn it on, all that's happening is it's turning on a later point. So again, it's chopping off the leading part of the waveform and then just leaving on what's left as it goes down to zero. And if you have a look on this sort of half point here, then it's uh, fairly obvious there. We've got a flat piece and a vertical instant sort of cut on. That's the waveform without the piece cut in. So essentially it's just chopping out the piece at the leading edge. And that gives an average voltage of considerably less because if you took these pieces and then just sort of average them out into a flat line there's obviously not much uh, here to actually average out there's a lot of off space whereas if it was turned up to a higher level then the sort of off period is actually less. Now this does in fact result in the lamp flickering and if it's turned down quite low so if we just sort of go down to about as low as we can get then it's pretty much off for the whole time there's only a little tiny pulse coming in there and it is actually flickering at the Relate to those pulses and there's a hundred of those pulses every second, 50 in one direction, 50 in the other. And uh, on some types of lamps that would cause flickering but on an incandescent lamp you don't notice because the filament is glowing white hot. So although it's turned off in this period of course it doesn't cool down instantly. So with an incandescent lamp this type of dimmer is perfectly fine and it gives what appears to be a smooth variation in brightness but of course in reality it's just being turned on and off a hundred times a second and the period of what's on and what's off is what determines the average brightness. Now this type of dimmer is quite old and generally is not suitable for use with LEDs because it has this very sharp switch on point all the time and this is also why dimmers like this do tend to buzz quite often because whereas you've got when it's on normally you've got this nice smooth waveform when it's in the dimming mode you've got this very sharp edge here and this edge is what causes the buzzing. So if you have say, a loose uh, conductor or something, certainly in the dimmer it has a uh, normally a coil or an inductor in there. If that becomes slightly loose, hitting the power on instantly causes a magnetic field there. And then this is what causes the buzzing. It only say, needs a little loose bit of wire or something in there. And then it's going to cause that buzzing at basically the mains frequency. So that's a uh, leading edge dimmer. And I say they're pretty much the old type, which you can still buy, but uh, they're really only for incandescent lamps. They generally don't work very well with LEDs and other styles. Now that was just a normal cheap o uh, old style dimmer. Then what we've got here is a more modern version. This is actually made by Verilite. This is designed to dim things like LEDs and even certain types of fluorescent as well. And uh, it has various modes as well you can set it up with so you can adjust it according to the things you're actually dimming. Now I've installed the uh, different dimmer here and uh, this is significantly different because if I turn this on I've already turned it to the maximum position so if I turn on the uh, override switch there it's just on and off but if I press this on you'll see that there is a major difference in the way this operates straight away. So as you can see there it doesn't come on instantly it actually ramps up the brightness fairly slowly and then of course gets up to the full brightness and that effect also applies if we were to turn it down so the actual brightness set isn't directly controlled by the knob. It's obviously some kind of uh, alternative arrangement. So this is basically sending a signal presumably to a microprocessor. And then that is doing the actual control of the brightness. So we can turn it down. If we turn it up, then it eventually gets up to the full brightness like that. Off, of course, is off. And then again, there's that uh, sort of soft start functionality we've got there. So clearly a completely different type of device. So let's see how this looks on the oscilloscope. So as before, here's the normal AC waveform. And this is direct on the power, so there's no dimmer involved at this point. So I'll just switch off that one and we can go over to the dimmer, which is already set to full brightness. And we'll have a look what this does as the brightness is ramped up. Now we can see that a major difference here is that rather than it cutting at the beginning of the waveform, it's now actually cutting it at the end of the waveform. So the front here is almost sort of what it was before, and then the cutting off piece is here, and again it's sort of over here on the end. And this is what's called a trailing edge dimmer. And the reason it's trailing edge is because it's 
starting off fairly normally, and then the cut is at the end of the waveform, or basically the trailing end of it. And just as before, if we expand that, it's pretty much the same all the way along. Now if we turn down the brightness, that should be uh, fairly evident in what's going on there. And again, we can see here that it's turning on fairly gradually, and then it's suddenly cutting off back down to zero. In the end, it's turning on the voltage fairly gradually, and then quickly cutting back down to zero. Now this has a number of advantages, certainly for LEDs, because uh, LEDs in general work better if you're going to sort of ramp up the voltage to start with, and then just uh, switch off at the end. And these should also be quieter because you've only got that sort of ramping up, and then the actual cut off at the side there, whereas before we were having that sort of very sharp cut on, and then it gradually ramped down. So theoretically a bit quieter, but in terms of its operation, we can see it's a fairly similar deal. It sort of just moves the uh, cut point so that the average voltage obviously is less. So we've got more of a sort of off period here. And if you turn up the brightness, the off period obviously gets a bit smaller. So say quite a similar arrangement, but it's sort of in reverse now. So we're on the edge of the, or the trailing edge of the waveform, instead of the leading edge. Just as with the other kind of dimmer, that's turned up to maximum. And even when it's at maximum, you see there is a still a small off period in the middle here. So again, as with the other kind, even when it's turned to maximum, it's not actually at the full brightness. If we turn over to the full brightness on the switch, you see that it basically fills in those missing gaps like that. Now I'll change to a LED lamp. This is a dimmer one, it's a 10 watt. It's this uh, Corby thing which we saw in a previous video. And this is at full brightness on the dimmer, and you see that uh, it is almost a nice sine wave shape. There's a few sort of bits of distortion in here, but overall it's quite a reasonable sort of shape there. And if we turn down the level of the brightness, we can see that it's doing a similar thing to we had before. So again, it's sort of ramping up reasonably smoothly, and then the actual off period is at the edge of the waveform, or the trailing edge there. And again, it sort of repeats there. And again, if we expanded that, and then of course it's pretty much the same all the way across. And we can turn down a bit more there. It will shift slightly because the trigger position is altering. So if we go down to a fairly low level, what we actually end up with is sort of a bit of a spike at one end, a fairly sort of moderate level, and then it cuts right down to the bottom, and then it comes back again to a moderate level and goes back up. So although the dimmer itself is set in exactly the same mode, just adding this LED in has applied a significant amount of distortion to the waveform, and we can see now it's actually more pointy, and there's a little bit of kinks and things going on in the middle. And if we just shift that across, you see that's effectively the start point there. This is a major problem with LEDs because the actual waveform that they, or the current that they draw, is horribly distorted. This is the voltage we're looking at here, but the current will be in a similar kind of shambles. And see, so this is sort of very pointy and uh, quite likely to cause quite a bit of interference. And if we turn down, say that's pretty much the minimum point there, and then as it increases, so basically the points will increase. But again, it's this sort of trailing edge situation here where the actual off period is located until eventually we get back to what is a fairly reasonable looking sine wave there. And we'll just go back to the two there. See, it's almost right, but not quite. Now, if we switch back to the proper sine wave, which is that, again, the brightness does increase slightly because, again, it's not uh, even at full brightness, it's still at uh, fractionally under that. This is dimming quite smoothly, by the way, so uh, not a particular problem there. Now, if you turn back to the dimmer with it leaving at full brightness, it will do that ramp up thing, which we saw previously, but this will be quite a different shape. So uh, let's try that. So we saw there, so that rather pointy thing again, and we get up to the full brightness. Now, I've just changed the dimmer settings to what they call mode two in the instructions. And we can see here that the uh, waveform is significantly different. We're actually back to similar to we had on the old style dimmer, where it's cutting on the leading edge or the start of the waveform, and again here as well. And if we turn down, that was up maximum brightness there. So again, we can see it's basically an off period, a sharp on point here, and then it uh, just tapers away, and the same in the other direction. So that's very similar to, say, the old styly dimmer that we had previously. So, so this one can be set in either of those modes. And we're on the uh, incandescent one again, the 60 watt job. So if we turn that to the full there, again there's still these sort of gaps here where it's off. That's obviously the uh, full sine wave. And if we switch back to that we can see this one will ramp up in that sort of soft start. But of course it will do it in the 
leading edge mode rather than the trailing. So see there it's sort of ramped up and then that's its full brightness position. Now I've just changed back to the 10 watt LED and again we can see quite a lot of significant distortion here but uh, even with this LED this is again at full brightness. We can see there's that step initially where it swiftly turns on or quickly turns on, tapers away and then there's that uh, again the same thing here where it goes back to pretty much a zero level and then there's that big cut as it goes and again if we turn down there again we can see that uh, it's doing pretty much the same thing. And finally here we've got what's called mode 3 on the instructions. It doesn't really make it clear what the main difference is. Back on the 60 watt incandescent again. And we can see it's another one of these trailing edge type of modes. So as we turn it down the cutting point is on the trailing edge here. So it's sort of ramping up and then cutting back. And again the same on the other side there. So let's turn on and uh, that's the deal with the LED. So on full brightness again we're almost getting a perfect uh, sine wave there. As we turn down, fairly similar to what we had before, that sort of these points are appearing in these sort of stepped areas. As we turn down the trigger point we'll uh, move there but it looks pretty similar to the mode 2 or what we had before. But uh, so a lot of this is just the distortion from the fact it's in uh, LED and it's not a linear load. Yeah, that's the minimum setting on the dimmer, and we can see it's still fairly large on the display, and the actual lamp itself is still fairly bright, so there's the actual lamp. That may not be in focus because it's on fixed at the moment, but that's actually the minimum, and that is the maximum, so uh, certainly a difference there in that that is still fairly bright. Now the instructions state that it does have a setting for minimum brightness as well, so in this case if you're just driving that single LED lamp you would of course adjust that to a uh, somewhat lower level because that's uh, probably at least half the uh, brightness there. But uh, nevertheless it seems to dim that one perfectly well but then again that one worked fairly well on the other modes as well. Now I've got another one here this is one of these filament style ones so that's on the minimum setting and it is literally barely even glowing there, there's a tiny bit of illumination. We can see already there's this rather horrible waveform on here. As we turn it up it does increase brightness fairly smoothly, that jump there is due to the trigger point moving. And that's basically the full brightness there, so we can see the waveform here is completely different to what we had previously. There's a lot of distortion in here, so uh, certainly a totally different deal altogether. And just compare that's what it should look like on the sine wave, and watch that ramp up. It's a bit of a uh, disaster zone there, but nevertheless it does seem to dim this one reasonably well. Just a quick look at the thing there, and if we just turn that down, then it does dim down fairly smoothly. Although so the waveform is totally different to the other one, there's certainly less pointiness, and uh, we're getting that additional piece of uh, little sort of step at the top here. And then even at sort of half brightness, the uh, point is still got that little sort of divot out of it there. So look there at different types of dimmer and the main types are the traditional one which is only good for incandescent lamps and that's generally the leading edge one as it cuts it at the start of the waveform. The more modern ones generally the trailing edge ones where it uh, cuts it at the end of the waveform that's generally better for LEDs and the like. These are the uh, two lamps that we'll be using. This uh, Corby one here is about uh, 10 watts and then this filamenty style thing is actually 5.1 and they both claim to be dimmable and they did seem to dim uh, fairly well. And of course there are various modes on that dimmer you can set. That particular one is a bit tiresome to set because you have to basically turn it on and off a certain number of times and then turn the knob to full and half and brightness and all that kind of bother to eventually get what you want and then it uh, signifies the changes by either ramping up and down or flashing at different brightnesses or a certain number of times and so on but uh, gets to the end result eventually. Some others have a little uh, adjuster on the back of it so you can sort of set the minimum brightness and so on but uh, in any case the end result is generally the same. So that's it for this video and until next time thanks for watching.